is Nana and I'm with uh, Imano who is our driver and today our itinerary takes us to Ibri and Tutu all are equipping towns overlooking Accra and the area we are driving from the Mickling Hotel this again is East Legon and Legon derived its name from the Ga word meaning Le in those days this whole area was a forest area and it is said that according to Gan tradition or the La tradition there's this antelope that roams around this hill at the Legon so they said Le go where the antelope uh, roam or the valley so they go there and say I am going to the antelope hill but in other words other people also have have the interpretation that le in the Ga language also means knowledge ni le knowledge and therefore when the university is cited there making it that people think that oh because the university is there that's why they call it le god meaning hill of knowledge but the actual historical fact is the antelope so we are in the legon area so it's Le Gong. And this area is a traditional area for the La people. Well, Ghana is the first country in Sub Saharan Africa to attain its independence on the 6th of March 1957. It became a republic on 1st July 1960. And since independence, Ghana has experienced 11 different types of government, both civilian and military. But since 1992, the people of Ghana have been electing their leaders through the ballot box and therefore the longest reigning uh, president uh, this country witnessed was Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rollins who came in 79, uh, relinquished power and came back again in 81 and then took over and reigned for almost 11 years before he promulgated or muted the return of a new constitution and that constitution was accepted by the people of Ghana through a referendum uh, and after that in 1992 the first election was held and the country since then have been electing their leaders through the ballot box and currently we have Nana Adodankwa Akufuado who is the president of Ghana and he's the third is the third president into the fourth republic that we are experiencing well ghana practices the executive presidency so our president is one of the powerful president in the world because he appoints almost everybody appoints the ministers appoint the district chief executives and almost all state institutions he has the power to appoint the only time and he wakes up in the morning he can fire you because the constitution guaranteeing him not to explain to the general public why he sacked you politically the country is divided into 275 constituency in terms of voting or election purposes so we have 275 parliamentarians representing the 31 million population of Ghana. The 31 million is based on the 2021 population census. The population census was supposed to be held in 2020, but unfortunately, due to the coronavirus, it didn't happen. And therefore, it was shifted to uh, 2021. So the statistical service gave us a provisional result of 31 point something million people living within the um, Ghana. Accra is the capital and also the largest city in Ghana with almost a population of 4 million people living within the city of Accra. Because Accra is a cosmopolitan um, city, it has people from all walks of life residing in Accra. But the indigents or uh, the natives are known as the Ga people and they occupy the coastal zone, mainly the coastal zone, namely Tema, Teshi, Nungwa, um, Usula, and all that, all the way. And then 
the inland wards have most mixed people even though we also have some natives living around but it's mixed but mainly the guys live along the coast and that is where you have the townships so this area belongs to the La people but the town itself is there the La town is there now when you want to remember any uh, uh, the La town just think of LA in the USA and you know is um, but this is not Los Angeles, but this translates to mean fire. Fire. Or in other words, when you look into books, you also see that they've written Labadi. Mm -hmm. Labadi. But over the last 40 years, the chief of La decided to revert the name because the name was given to it by the British. When you look along the coast of Ghana, you see a lot of forts and castles dotted. But it's only in La that there's no fort or trading post built by the British or any European because they did not allow them to do that. They were fighting them and so they referred to the La people as bad people. And so the people could not also say so. They said, oh, Labadi. And it turns that. But the real name is La. We are now joining the African Liberation Road. It started from the African Liberation Circle all the way to um, Tatakwashi interchange but that this is a national N4 road stretching from downtown Accra all the way to the mountains taking us to the eastern region to Equiapim and also to Dodowa in the both in the eastern region and this is a major road also linking other parts of Accra this section we are entering Okonglo area Okonglo is a town in between Legon and Shashi these are all um, local towns, so Ponglo, and then, then you enter Legon. And to my left is the entrance to the University of Ghana. University of Ghana, we're going to be riding through the, so I'll talk about that um, later, the Ga Ghana's premier university. We originally have 10 regions, and then now, we have 16 regions. 16 regions. Formerly, the Great Accra was the smallest, but now, Northeast region is the smallest in the northern part of the country. So, we have 16 regions. We have Great Accra, Eastern, Volta, Oti region, Northern region, Savannah region, and Northwestern, so forth. But apart from that, in terms of administrative purposes, the country is divided into 263 districts or counties. Ghana is a multi-ethnic country comprising the Akans forming the largest population, the Ewas, the Moli Dagbani people in the north, and the Fantas and all that come out to make up the Akan. Then we have the Enzimats, also part of the Akan. The Asante, also part of the Akan. The Owin, part of the Akan. The Bwats also speak a dialect, but they are not Akans. They are mixed, they were submerged by the migrants, like the Santas and others, but the original inhabitants of Ghana were the Guan people. And therefore, when you go all over Ghana, you see the Guan settlement all over in the Kapim area, in the northern area, in the central region, and in the Accra area, you find that uh, the Bwans scattered all over and they speak the Bwan language. The most common language you hear most people in Ghana uh, use or communicate with is a tree language. TWI, but that does not make it a national language. Uh, our national language, our adopted language, is the English, so English is the official language. And then we speak our various um, dialects and languages that we use in the country. Um, the country also have, is divided into two geographical zones. We have North and South, and currently we are in Southern Ghana. And Southern Ghana is more humid, 
is more uh, cooler than the northern part of the country. The northern part of the country lie in the Sahel zone and therefore when the more you drive upwards the more hotter the climate becomes. In southern Ghana we have two major seasons. We have what we call the raining season, the heavy raining season and the light raining season. Currently we are going into the major raining season which is May, June, July. While the light raining season is from August, September, October, November and then we enter what we call the dry season. Now the dry season is caused by the northeastly winds blowing from the Sahara onto the coast and what we also say uh, Hamatan or uh, and this atmosphere becomes hazy and dry unlike what we are experiencing now. Then the rainy season is caused by the southwest monsoon winds blowing from the Atlantic onto the coast bringing in the um, rains. Ghana is basically an agricultural country. 60 to 65 percent of Ghanaians are into farming but you will not have that huge uh, commercial farms as you know it in Europe or in, uh, in America but what we do is subsistence farming and subsistence farming is where a farmer grows a crop for the family and then the rest is sent into the market so that is what um, we do but we also have cash crops and these cash crops are cash crops that uh, end the country foreign exchange and that is Coco. Coco, Ghana used to be the first or uh, the world number one producer of cocoa until we were overtaken by our neighbor to the west, that is Ivory Coast. So Ghana is the second largest producer of cocoa in the world. So the most of the chocolate you take, know that it comes from Ghana. If you want the best and the premium cocoa, is from Ghana because our cocoa is organically produced no chemicals are introduced into it and when we are traveling outside the city I will show you now we are out of the Legon area we are into Medina this is a densely populated town a suburb of a crowd called Medina it's a mixture of very uh, middle-class people and poor people mix and here the name Medina simply is taken from Saudi Arabia because we have a lot of Muslims in this area or inhabiting this part of um, Accra. Medina is one of the busiest part of Accra. When you come here 24 hours, seven days a week, the place is always, always busy. And you can get whatever you want from used clothing to foodstuffs to whatever you want. You come here any time of the day, even at night, you get whatever you want in the Medina area. Ago. Now, when I want to call your attention, I am going to say Ago. In Ghana, when we want to gain attention or gain entry of people, we say Ago. Now, when you respond Ame, it means that you are ready to hear me out or you're ready to listen to what I want to say. So let's try it and see Ago. Okay. Good.